Hello everybody, I hope that you are doing very well and welcome to today's video where I'm going to be starting with a review of the recent trading competition. Then I want to go over all the signal calls that I gave during that competition for transparency sake. You can see some of the winners and the losers. And then I want to end with the current trading position that I'm here in on Bitcoin and um, you know what's going on here. So uh, I do hope that you enjoy this video and let's start off by a review of the competition which obviously has, is now over the competition has ended uh, so I want to give a review of this okay and um, it's, it's a difficult one this whole competition like I was August was going to be like the month of, of the year for me I was so looking forward and hyped to trade in this competition extremely excited and um then obviously I received the unfortunate news slash the event of obviously my dad dying, um, you know, and that just totally went from full focus on trading to no focus on trading, obviously just spending time with the family and yeah, obviously it devastated me to be honest, but um, yeah, naturally that took me out of the competition. I, I didn't want to trade in it anymore um, and that was obviously unfortunate, but um, yeah, no things happen in life we've obviously had the funeral out of the way now and um you know with time time heals and you remember the good times and you know i don't want to dwell on that too much i want to actually say uh well done to wtc is that is that walton chain uh from korea like uh, those those careers they, they must be very good very good algo traders or sculpt traders because that is insane like some of them doing five thousand percent like honestly well done to those winners and i would have loved to have competed against you um but yeah, unfortunately, I got taken out of this one. So I will compete with you in the next competition. But um, yeah, well done on winning that competition this time around. Like really well done. Um, and yeah, this is the message that I wanted to just say to everyone. I always say, you know, to be honest, like even for me, second place is the first loser. But <laughs> so obviously we didn't win. The, we didn't even come close to winning the competition. I think we came 19th, um, which for, for me personally, I would say like that's awful. But, um, you know, as I was saying here, you had to trade without without a captain. So um it was always going to make it harder for everybody, let's be honest. But, you know, there we go. Uh, be back for the next one. Uh, obviously, um, yeah, this is, yeah, so we did come 19th in the end. Uh, average uh, 72 PNL. Obviously, I'd done nothing in that, traded not at all. But to be honest, I think you've got to think of this in like a, in this sort of light that um, in what the competition ran for like two weeks, didn't it? So in two weeks, if you're over 10, like over 10%, that's incredible percentage gains. Um, and although the competition is obviously focused towards PNL, you do have to think in the long run, like the long-standing traders. I mean, some of these guys in the in the team that over doubled their accounts. That's like, that is crazy to be honest. Like doing over 100% in a few weeks, that's really impressive. But I think you can be pleased with yourself as long as you you know over. Let's be serious. Two weeks, if you're doing two percent in two weeks, that's an incredible account growth. So anybody that's really ended with this over two percent, I would say you know pat yourself on the back. That's a good that's a good result. And obviously some of the people at the top here with over 100%, well, that's obviously extremely impressive. So <laughs> well done to you guys. Um, yeah, I obviously ended on 0%, didn't trade in it. But um, yeah, I'm looking forward to the next one. And uh, for the guys, for the people, because there were obviously some people that got liquidated, I mean, you really got to focus on your risk management because if you are liquidating yourself, I know that it was a high leverage, let's be honest, it was a high leverage competition, but you got to work on your risk management. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's that's what I wanted to start with. The review there, where we finished, um, and obviously the complications for myself that incurred. Um, but I don't want to dwell on that. So let's go over now. Secondly, I want to go through the signal calls that I gave uh, during the competition. Um, so it started off, obviously I wanted to start this on the 10th slash 17th. And, um, you know, I, I got took out of it. I, I I couldn't be there for the for the for at least the first week because I was just too upset. So uh, thankfully, obviously, we got Mike, who's a coach, and Victor, who's a coach, uh, who stepped in for me during this first week, and they decided to um, to help me out. Like I massively appreciate that. And they were doing like daily live streams, and they they weren't doing signal calls, but they were just giving an overview in the morning of what they expect to happen. Uh, you know, just a Bitcoin overview in the morning. So they were doing their daily updates. Um, Monday to Friday, by the way, but their daily updates in the morning. Blah, 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 blah. And this is when I done my first signal call on the 17th. Um, and um, I'll be totally frank with you that I probably spent 
one minute on all of these charts, like, well, one minute is exaggeration, obviously, but probably like five, ten minutes on the charts. I, I really had no focus, no motive. You know, I just really couldn't be bothered to do the charts. And it felt as if I, I kind of was obligated. Obviously, I, I had, you know, said to everyone, I'm going to do the signal call. So I felt as if there was an obligation to, you know, for, for, you know, fulfill it, really. Um, and to be fair, it started off okay, but you can tell like the level of of the chart here is really basic. Basically, what I was looking for was a swing failure pattern of the lows. Okay, then we had once you know if that swing failure pattern, you then get the entry. I was looking for take profit one twelve thousand two hundred, take profit two twelve thousand five hundred, and take profit three uh, twelve thousand nine hundred. That was my idea. And um, to be fair, it started off all right, uh, but I, I I would even say myself these are these are subpar trades. Let, let's be honest. Um, for my standards anyway, I would say. But it did start off okay. You did get that swing failure pattern, okay? And obviously, once that swing failure, failure pattern had occurred, you could get entries around 11,850, okay? And so the idea is swing failure pattern, and then you obviously got your take profit one, two, and three set, okay? So that it started off pretty nice. You got managed to get up to take profit one, which was 12,200. And then this was pretty cool because you got managed to get take profit two, which was 12,500, okay? Um... I was trying to, at this point, I just had on like a mask and I was just pretending, you know, just trying to, you know, I don't know. But nevertheless, you can see it did go pretty well because the high that was put in there, okay, the high that was put in was 12,500 to the dollar. So that actually was the exact high and that's why it was, you know, a big take profit. But I think the reason why I could identify that so well was because this had work, was work that I'd done, you know, the month prior. So I already had these levels set out and I knew where the resistances was. So there wasn't actually any new things that I had to do at this point because obviously you're in a, a level that's untapped during the previous months so it was a bit of an easier trade but um yeah that was trade number one it basically hit two take profits and obviously we know it never hit take profit three um and then what I decided to do was the following day and again this 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 <laughs> I look at this now when I'm thinking correctly and I think pfft, I mean, this is a this is an awful trade setup. Let's be honest. I look at this and I mean, what what am I even looking at here? Yeah, let's be honest. It was a really poor idea, but nevertheless, this is what I came up with in <laughs> with five minutes on the chart. Uh, I was looking basically a uh, continuation of this. Obviously, having hit two take profits, I was looking to compound it. Uh, basically, looking still for take profit three. Um, and I, I knew that 12,000 was the support, which if lost is bearish. So, you know, there was some thought process there, obviously thinking to, to myself, looking for higher prices. We lose 12K. Well, I don't think it's going to happen anymore. And then we look for lower prices. Pretty simple. Um, obviously, this didn't work out. So this was a losing trade. Um, well, for myself, I kind of got out of it a little bit break even. But nevertheless, we can put this down as a losing trade because the, the, the majority of the people that obviously followed this call lost because, you know, it was an awful trade. It was an awful trade setup. Um, and obviously we lost 12,000. I, I don't know, something. Uh, this is must have been when we like lost the level and then we obviously retested 12K. And obviously that retest of 12K was the resistance and, and you obviously fell down all the way in the end to the value area low being 11,100. But um, you can see how you lost the level, you retested the level and then it was downhill from there. Um, but at this moment in time... Um, it kind of just got over, a bit overwhelming for me. And although I, you know, I didn't want to kind of go away and take time off, I was really trying to force myself to put in a little bit of time, but it just got too much for me. And uh, basically, I closed all my trades. So I closed all the Bitcoin swings. I closed all my altcoins. And uh, basically, I just sold sold everything because I was like, I just can't do this anymore. I just, I just couldn't do it, to be honest. Uh, so what I done was I sold all of those long positions and I just went into time swan short. That just protects your capital. So you're in a short position. If Bitcoin falls, you hold your USD. So that's basically what I done there. And I was saying to people, I was looking for the weekly slash six, six. And I did at the time have an idea that if you swing forward that weekly, then I would go back into the long. Obviously, that swing failure pattern never occurred. So that never happened. But um, yeah, at this moment in time, life was overwhelming. <laughs> um, and then obviously my convictor continued with their daily updates. Again, I appreciate those guys and the team, customer service training assistants so much. Really, really well helped me out, you know, greatly as well as everybody else with their supportive messages. Um, I uh, Looks like I've done another update here. I actually can't remember these updates, but um, I must have only been in a short at this moment in time. Probably still that's times one short, and that was at around 11,600. 
Okay, I think I was either waiting for a swing fire of the weekly, and obviously that yeah, that never happened, uh, or just staying in the times one short for for lower levels at this moment in time. Okay, um, looks like you had an uh, intermediate CCV setup. Uh, so this is a trading setup that we have with inside of the group, and this one. This one I do kind of, this one I do remember because this is when I was uh, basically looking for um, a move up before moving back down, before moving back up, which has in the end happened. But this is when we were bouncing off that around 11,500. This was on the 22nd. So this was pretty cool because obviously on the 22nd you had that low and then you got the retest of the point of control. And I do remember I had 11,700 set as my take profit one. And what this done was it hit take profit one and then I got stopped on the rest. Okay. I do remember that trade now. Um, yeah. Obviously hit that 11,700 take profit. That was the, the big weekly point of control. Okay. That was our big, uh, you know, big point of control, which you kind of hit. You lost the level. You rejected. That's where you come all the way down to about your area low. Um, so there we have that first trade, which went. You know, that first trade was what I love it like 10%. I can't remember, but you obviously had the first trade which hit two take profits, obviously, then stopped on the rest. You had the next trade, which was the compound trade, which was you know, straight out rubbish. You know, let's be honest, for me, that is awful trade. Um, then you had this one, which again hit take profit one, stopped on the rest. So we can see overall it's ending a little bit profitable but it, it just really poor especially for my standards poor trading um and then i took another little bit of a break we continue well mike and victor continued with their daily sessions uh this one was pretty cool that mike done a uh, session in the day where he done some live trading and um uh yeah traded that nice so well done to him and this is another one where i was waiting for a swing fire pattern obviously of 11k this one never happened by the way this one never came to fruition g never swing fire patterned 11k um but what i did get into the end is the next one and this is now where i had got the funeral out of the way and really i came back trading properly on wednesday we're now on what day are we on monday <laughs> i come back trading after that after that funeral was out of the way and i kind of cleared my head a little bit and just felt ready to start getting back into it. I haven't started sculpt trading yet. I am going to get back into that tomorrow. My plan is to start sculpt trading again tomorrow, but I need to come back for the swing trades. Uh, I've done a two hour live stream where I identified some levels and I done, uh, yeah, I can say, uh, as you know, from my last video that I made, like I would say I like had my mojo back because I went through this period of obviously uh, not looking at the charts at all and I and I have like I pride myself on having a really good connection with Bitcoin and seeing what's going to happen before it happens um, so many times and to have that connection with the market is obviously extremely beneficial but I definitely lost that connection and um, it was hard it was it was hard because I've I've always so used to do well on Bitcoin and then just losing that connection and it felt like oh this is really bad and obviously there was added pressure as well because I really wanted to uh, perform to my highest because I knew people were going to be copying copying my trades, basically. Um, although obviously not financial advice, but nevertheless, people were probably going to be copying this. Um, and so I come back and I wanted to end with like a really, really good call. And this was this was this was pretty funny because I had people starting doubting me, you know, thinking to thinking to myself that I wasn't going to come back, that I, I was done. And I don't know, people really, really started to doubt me, <laughs> to be honest. Like it was it was. Yeah, that, that was pretty crazy. Some of the DMs that I received. Yeah, were, were really mean, actually. But yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, people are people are really weird. But anyway, um, this was then my my present to the people that stuck with me to the end and didn't give up on me. I didn't like doubt me saying that I'm finished and I'm done. Um, yeah, for them, pe for those people, I rewarded them very much so with the last signal call that I gave here. And this was done or actually on the 26th, tw sorry, 27th, 28th. And this is where it was a long position. And as I was mentioning in the last video, I cannot click on this to actually show you uh, the trade because it is still an ongoing trade and there's three parts to the trade. Uh, so we're only in part number one of this trade. And this uh, hand on heart, I will share this with everybody once it's finished. But this is like a next level just outstanding piece of work if i do say so myself and i think you could every champion would agree with me it, it's a next level thinking trade really 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 is and i will share it with you once this is played out but as it's ongoing i owe it to the people that stuck with me <laughs> to you know 
to, to not, not share this publicly. Um, but basically, I can give you a high level overview of it. I just can't click on it because it's got three parts. But basically, we were looking at take profit one, 11,530, take profit two, 11,650, take profit three, 11,900. As you can see, by the way, the first entry was 11,220. So there we go. It ended definitely with the best here, hitting take profit one, hitting take profit two. And now we're either waiting for a trend change and then switch into a short position or again, moving on to the take profit three. Um, and this is the thing. This is the thing. Like if you do not take profits, because on that first call that I done, obviously that was an insane, to be honest, it was a, it was a pretty good trade. But if people, there were some people that did not take profits. And obviously I'm saying to you, take profit one hit, take profit two hit. But then you get some people that are just there like, oh, I'm not taking profits. And then when they get stopped, they obviously lose money. You know, it's it's, it's just really dumb. Let's be honest. But, you know, you got to take profits because in this situation, let's just say Bitcoin falls down heavily here. OK, if you have taken profits, you've take profit one, take profit two. It's a profitable trade when you get stopped. But if you have not taken any profits and Bitcoin drops and you get stopped, well, then you lose money on what should be a profitable trade. And this I think the biggest thing that people have to have taken is <laughs> taking profits is so key because you can see on some of my trades, you know, hitting two of three take profits. That for me is an extremely profitable trade. But if you have not taken profits, then you keep losing the trade. So I think a takeaway of the competition of the many is that they've got to actually listen to me when I'm saying take profits. Uh, but yeah, hit take profit two yesterday, obviously 11,650. This is still an ongoing trade. And uh, I can say proudly, um, I feel my connections back and I feel this last trade definitely proved it. And I feel it was really nice for the people that stuck stuck with me and kept their faith <laughs> i don't know why people lost their faith in me because it was pretty obvious i wasn't going to be able to well i actually said it you know i i, I admitted to everybody i have no motivation and you know that that was fair enough and some people um you know left i gave them their money back and you know it was it you know people had there was no hard feelings so so to speak it's just you know lost their faith but for the people that stuck to the end um uh, yeah they got rewarded let's be honest because that was a great trade and i will share this one publicly once it's finished but yeah to be honest it's too good at the moment to share um but i promise you i will share this one whether it overall wins or loses uh, i will still share the thought process behind this in a public video because yes yeah, it's, it's next level <laughs> um so yeah that was what i wanted to cover wasn't it i've gone through the results uh, review of the competition i've just gone there just for transparency didn't have to do it but just so you could see the signal calls that i gave in that competition okay uh, and then anything that i wanted to end with i uh, yeah i will do the giveaway by the way i know that i um, need to do the giveaway still and that's for a hundred dollars bitcoin and i'll probably i think i'm going to do that monday i think wednesday or thursday I will do a live stream where we'll, we'll randomly pick a, a winner of that Bitcoin. Um, so I have not forgot about it. It's just, you know, life is <laughs> life got in the way and I had no time for to do, do that. But um, yeah, I will do that. Don't worry. And is there anything else that I wanted to mention? Um, no, I don't think there is anything else that I wanted to mention. So um, yeah. That, that's, that's the video. I hope that you've enjoyed the review of this. Hope that you can see how it started, how it ended. And um, yeah, ending. Thank you. Thank you, Trappians. Thank you, everybody, uh, for the support that you've given me over the last few weeks. You know, it honestly means a lot to me. Um, and it's nice to know that I have friends here looking out for me and and, and, and care about me. So it's, it's, it's nice. And um, Time Hills will be back for the next competition with no distractions. Well, I pray that nothing like that happens again. But um, yeah, don't know. I'm always really bad at ending the video. So I'm just going to say thank you once again, everybody. Cheers. And I'll catch you in the next one. Have a good, have a brilliant day. Bye.